Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video is part of a seven part series on making lithium iron phosphate battery cells. In this video we're going to talk about top balancing and how you can go ahead and top balance correctly. So that way you get a nice tight battery and nothing swells up on you and you don't actually damage your battery pack. So stay tuned. Hello world, this is Random Fix and on a previous video I showed you how to go ahead and assemble a uh, EVE battery pack like this. These are 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells and in this video today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go ahead and top balance this. So what I like to do is go ahead and use a 12 volt charger like this and then to fine tune everything I'll use a power supply like this. That way I'm not waiting for days or weeks to go ahead and get the batteries top balanced. So I always check the battery voltage when I get the batteries in and I hook them up in parallel so I connect all the positives to the positives, the negatives to the negatives and I leave them like that for at least a couple of days if not a week. And once the batteries are balanced out into each other in similar voltages, I'll go ahead and make it into a cell like this and I showed you guys how to do this on a previous video and showed you how to also make the battery studs because do not use the hardware that they gave you as it will strip out. So once the studs and everything's made, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery charger. This happens to be my Victron 30 amp one and it does a really good job. However, these batteries, the charging voltage on the cells here is about 3.6 per cell. And if you actually times that four times four, you're going to have a much higher voltage than 3 volts. So I like to go ahead and run these up to about 13.8 and get everything nice and charged up. And for the last bit of the charge, I'll go ahead and put it on the 12 volt charger like this. So I've already gone ahead and charged up this battery here. And on the previous video, I showed you how to make a XT90 connector like this. And these are really great in case you need to bypass the BMS ever. And there might be times that you want to do that because in case something happens with the BMS, I still want to be able to access the power in the battery. And maybe I'm going to use a battery charger like this and I just want to do something manually. So always a good idea to hook up an extra pair of leads like this. So the battery's topped off. I'm now I'm going to go ahead and grab my battery charger right here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the leads here so the battery is not going to be a 12 volt battery instead we're going to turn it back into a 3 volt battery and then I'm going to go and top balance this to 3.65 volts in each cell and after the charger basically has less than 0 0.001 amps going in I know the battery is top balanced or if there's no more power coming from the power supply into the battery bank we're good to go and then we can go ahead and attach the BMS's so let's go ahead and hook this up now and remove these bus bars so we can go ahead and get ourselves a 3 volt battery now. So with the bus bars removed, I've gone ahead and hooked up my power supply here and I got it cranked into 3.65 and basically everything is charging. Remember when you're working on these EVE cells here that the black is going to be your positive and this is going to be your negative so if you don't want to do cell by cell what i like to do is go ahead and grab yourself some jumper leads like this and you can go ahead and basically daisy chain it and this can make it a little faster and you don't have to sit there and go from cell to cell to cell so personally i do it this way and now i'm just going to go ahead and wait until this reads zero zero one or just zeros all across then I know my battery is top balanced and then in the next video I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and attach the BMS and so it's very important to go ahead and top balance the batteries only when the battery is actually configured as if you top balanced without configuring the battery first and basically taping everything down what will happen is the cells actually expand and you'll get gaps in these plates here and you're basically shortening the life of your battery. So after your power supply reads 3.65 with no amps going into the battery, 
you are ready to go. The batteries are top balanced and this took about three days after I put it on the 12 volt power supply and definitely it's going to take some time and if you go ahead and back everything off you guys will notice it just dropped down to 3.63. This is normal. The batteries are going to go ahead and taper off. And now we're going to go ahead and attach the BMS. For best results go ahead and move the jumper leads from the power supply from cell to cell instead of using clips or anything else use the actual leads themselves it takes a little bit longer but you'll get a much better balanced battery now that we got the batteries top balanced here I just wanted to go ahead and give you a quick little recap in case I missed anything so when you first get your batteries go ahead and put them in parallel you can go ahead and use the bus bars or use some wire leads and stabilize the voltage so all the batteries are going to be pretty much the same and if you happen to have two battery packs like I do here go ahead and select the cells that are closest once we went ahead and did that as we did in the very first video we went ahead and built the studs which I'll have links to all those videos down below once the studs were built we went ahead and assembled the battery and made everything nice and tight and the reason we did that is because we don't want to charge the cells up without ha them having some support next to them. So if you guys notice here, these cells right here, there's really no big gaps right here. And this is exactly what you want. If you charge these cells without it being assembled, they'll go ahead and puff up. And then you're going to have to work really hard to go ahead and get everything to fit. And that's not what you want to do. So go ahead and assemble the battery. Once the battery is assembled, we put it on a 12 volt charger and we let the charger run up to about 13.8 or 14 volts. And then we go ahead and remove it off that, put it on a power supply unit and crank it up to 3.65. And you might have to overshoot a little bit by going to 3.67. And then once the amperage or current into the batteries is near zero you are top balanced and next we're going to go ahead and attach the BMS's we're going to go ahead and put all the finishing touches on the battery and lastly we're going to go ahead and throw it inside of a box so in the next video which will be at the end of this video or in the link down below we're going to go ahead and attach this BMS I already have mine wired up and I've gone ahead and made the terminals for each of the wires so this wire set right here is for the Heltec BMS this is the 5 amp version and this is how you stabilize these batteries because they have so much capacity the regular BMS cannot go ahead and stabilize them we have the Bluetooth module here for the BMS and then we have the BMS wire leads themselves so I'll show you guys how to do this in the next video but these are ready to go and just to be installed if you guys are enjoying this series on how to go ahead and build a lithium iron phosphate battery cell, go ahead and consider giving the video a thumbs up. And I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. For best results, go ahead and move the jumper leads from the power supply from cell to cell. Instead of using clips or anything else, use the actual leads themselves. It takes a little bit longer, but you'll get a much better balanced battery when you're top balancing the batteries please do as I say not as I do do not use these alligator clips as they will cause you problems make sure you make yourself some lugs out of 8 gauge wire and you'll be good to go if you go this route what will happen is one of the cells the one that's furthest from the clips will be unbalanced and not true and you're gonna have to go redo it again cell by cell which is not going to be fun so make yourself some nice wires and use these instead